and you put a gun to their head and you killed them. There is no other explanation. You are a stone cold killer. Cheers to the man who makes it happen for us. Happy birthday, John. Cheers, John. We love you. Well, you were going to be our uh, our surprise shot dedication for today. I feel like when it's our birthday, surprise shot goes to you. Okay. I do want to make sure I shout out our newest Patreon member, Tina. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. All right. Cheers. 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 I have a guess before we go. Yep. Oh, what was it? Oh, oh. Actually, I was wrong. <laughs> oh. It was 99 proof in it. Uh, pineapple. Uh, thank you, everybody. Happy birthday. I am 38. Right? Seven. Oh, sweet. 37. You got an extra gear in your life. Hooray. Shit, I'm almost 40 years old. Almost. Not yet. You have time. All right. We have a story tonight for you guys. I don't know if you've heard it, but do you guys want to get started? Yes. And Natasha, very good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Natasha, what's up? And we're going to 10905 Powers Avenue in Cockeysville, Maryland. So this is weird. I have not been here on Google Earth at all. Yet I type in that number and it's the first one that comes up. Did you search it though on regular Google for you? Yeah, I did search it on the map. That's probably why. Fucking damn it. Always watching me and shit. All right, here we go. That's like on Christmas. My Whoa. Sorry, Jim. Go ahead. My Christmas. family got me an Amazon Echo Dot and I didn't know how to respond because it was going to listen to your response. Yeah. Would you buy this house? No, because it's probably a murder house. What? Why would you say um, that? Um, if it was located in Charleston, South Carolina, perhaps. Oh, so, it'd be weird for it. Would, well, I mean, it would be, it wouldn't be as expensive probably as it is in Maryland. So what, I mean, Maryland's expensive. This part of more Maryland. so than South Carolina, probably. What? Because we're a bunch of inbred hicks down no, here? No, but close, like, closer to the cer certain cities. Area. Yeah. What, so I love my cousin? You can take <laughs> whatever I say any way you want to say. I don't have to give you permission because you're going to do it anyway, so. I've never been to Maryland, but they say it's expensive. This part of Maryland, Cockeysville, is upper echelon. So this house right here is actually one of the wealthiest in this part of Maryland. Hmm. And I guess it is kind of expensive because, I don't know, it, it looks nice. and Good there's, lot sizes. Yeah, yeah, really. I mean, look at this over here. You can see the lot size right here. Good good amount of privacy. Between I'm the surprised homes. they don't have a pool. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Pool. Well, yep. What is this? Looks like a sewer drain. No. Or maybe that's maybe that's a, a above ground pool. I don't know. Or a hot tub. No. That little ass No, that might be like a little pool. fire pet or something. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I told you the address right there. It's in a very wealthy part of Maryland. We're going to February 1st, 2008. It's a Friday night. Well, actually, let me start the day after on a Saturday. Okay. February 2nd, 2008 is a Saturday. Again, we're at 10905 Powers Avenue. This is the people that live in the house. Oh, it's a nice family. family. Family of five, three boys. That's the Browning family. So in that photo, you have John. He is the, the father. John, Tamara, Gregory, Benjamin, and Nicholas. Three kids, three sons, and a husband husband and wife. I'm starting the story on Saturday. It's around 5.30 p.m. This is February 2nd, 2008. And Nicholas, 15 year old, he is out with his friends. He's at the mall. And since early that morning, he was supposed to go to his house to, to clean because his mom said, all right, you know, you can go out with your friends, but you have to be back in the morning to clean. But usually, since, since he doesn't drive, he's only 15. Usually she would have to come pick him up at his friend's house. So that didn't happen in the morning and plus the mother's usually calling him and texting him and stuff like that and that just does not happen so he's getting really worried at this point so the whole day he's with his friends and at 5 30 the friends go back and drop him off and he enters his house goes to the garage and he is already kind of on edge because his family his dad his two brothers and his mom has not been answering any of his phone calls has not been answering any text and it's been all day it's 5 30 at night like where are they what's going on he gets home. The cars are still there. They're still in the garage. He goes to the garage with the code and he's calling out mom, dad, you know, Greg, Benjamin, the brothers, no answer. He looks on the couch. He sees his dad. His dad's just 
laying there. It's not until he gets real close that he sees there's blood all over the couch. Mm. Someone had shot his father in the back of the head. His father was sleeping from what it looked like in the back of the head, straight down. So is it like execution, you know, style? Like this is like targeted hit type thing? That's a good question. We're going to get to that in a second. He sees his dad there and immediately he starts freaking out. He's with three other boys his age, but they also run in and see this, this massacre. Dad is dead on the couch. Blood everywhere. He's been shot in the back of the head. The gun's not there. All there is is blood splatter. So Nicholas goes in and he's like, what the f- and he runs upstairs to check on his mom. In the master bedroom, the mom is also there, shot through the head twice. So he, th- at this point, he can't even process it. He runs into his brother's room, which they shared a room, but they have different beds. So the youngest brother, uh, Gregory and Benjamin, 113, 111, he goes in there and both of the brothers are also dead. Bullet through the head. All of them dead. It was, yeah, it's a, it's a hit of some sort. Yeah. On the couch, like bloody, his face was really pale. And then we got Mr. Pat, who's about to drive away. He came in and then he pushed us away from like the dad. So Nick went upstairs, found his mom in the master bedroom and the, his two brothers in their bedroom, like all bloody. And I was, I, I was up there too with him. And Alex was down the hall and I just took Nick and just brought him outside. So you have four 15-year-old boys, one of them the son of a family that was just brutally murdered. And I mean, think about it. They all saw the the dad, the mother, and the two younger boys, which were younger. Both of the brothers were younger than, than these 15-year-olds. They're dead. What they also noticed is the house is ransacked. This was a robbery of some sort. Huh. I've, I told you that the house was in a really wealthy neighborhood, and that house was of the upper echelon of the socioeconomic economic Yeah, but usually status. like robbing and and murder to you know with shots to the head are two very different kind of crimes and motives. Like if you wanted to steal something in that neighborhood, you're probably studying, doing your homework cuz you just want the wealth that might be in there. So it feels like there's something else at play. Well, what if what if I'm a robber and I go in there and get caught? You know, maybe I thought you guys weren't going to be home and the dad catches me, so I shoot him real quick quick. But that's not what happened. So you can tell by the fact that he was shot in the back of the head. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. It wasn't it wasn't like a fight and unexpected. When the detectives go over everything, it seems like everyone was sleeping. There was there was no no fighting back, no defensive wounds. The dad didn't even wake up. He was he was on the couch. He said, yeah, on like, the couch downstairs, the couch. snoozing. And I mean, he didn't wake up. The mother, same same thing. She was sleeping. The two brothers, one of them probably Probably did wake up, I would imagine, when they heard that shot, when, when you know, the shot that killed his brother, but only for a few seconds, you know what I'm saying? It does make me wonder if more than one person is involved, because, like, you would think a gunshot would wake up somebody in the house. Unless they use, like, a silencer or shot through a pillow or something. Ooh, yeah, good call. Yeah, the pillow thing would be interesting. But the gun, the bullets were nine millimeter, so, yeah, you'd be able to hear that, even in that big house, you know? You'd be able to hear it upstairs. For definitely. sure. I mean, I would jump I mean, up, even yeah. And, well, I mean, number one, silencers are illegal, I'm pretty sure. And I know in most states. Well, well so the, is murder, but I yeah. mean, here we are. Now, I know what I'm trying to say. episodes later. True. What I'm trying to say is you're not going to be able to find a silencer and shooting through a pillow. I don't think that would really muffle the sound all that much. I mean, it does on TV, I guess. Maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, Let's see. Sable said, I'm saying Amityville Horror because she's so freaked out about how DeFeo shot all the family members with a shotgun and no one heard the sound. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Shotgun, you definitely definitely hear it. Now, all four of the boys, they run out. 911's called, everything else. The whole family is dead except 15-year-old Nicholas Browning. Now, let me talk about the family itself in the house because it seems at this point that it was a robbery. There's jewelry spilled over everywhere. Spilled over, but not taken. Interesting. Staged. Did I ever tell you about the time that I can't my house y'all. got robbed? I'm sorry. This is episode 410. This means I think we need a new niche. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. But y'all won't let me do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. 
<laughs> Let's talk about the family. The the father, if this was some sort of robbery, there is motive for a robber to target not only the family for wealth, but the father is a uh, practicing attorney. He does mostly real estate and commercial, but he's very well known in the community. I was looking at the law firm. Apparently, this is the oldest law firm in the, the whole town, and it's the most like prestigious, and he is a partner there. The family is extremely well off. They have real estate holdings. They have summer houses. I mean, you saw their house is really nice to be in in that part of Maryland. There's a lot to take there if robbery was the motive. And a little bit about the family. They're not only rich, they're they're well-loved and well, well-known. The father, for example, is an, a scout leader. He is a, a church leader. The family itself, they, they do everything together. The kids, all three kids, they go to sporting games. They'll be at every football game, high school football games, middle school. You have Nicholas, who's playing lacrosse in high school. The other two brothers playing their sport, lacrosse, basketball. So they're going to all these games with each other. They're they're in the church every Sunday. They're out on the church trips. They do the camping trips and all that stuff. And plus being an Eagle Scout leader, you know, I mean, they, they're really tight knit and really respected. Mm. They don't flaunt everything. If they did, they'd probably have that huge pool. You know what I'm saying? They don't flaunt their wealth, but you know that they're very wealthy. The children, you have Gregory, 13 years old, Benjamin, 11. Both of them, well, all three of the brothers, even Nicholas, they're AP students in their classes, top of their class. Not only that, they're popular. They're the they're the cool kids in, in their classes and schools. They're well-known. They're well-loved. They're always smiling. They're quiet, wealthy, active members of the community. So obviously we have to find a killer. So let me go back to that night, the, the night that this happened, probably around 1.30 to 3 in the morning. Somewhere in that time period, there was four family members brutally slain. All right, so let's actually go back and see, see the timeline here. Friday night, the 15-year-old Nicholas Browning, he is over at his friend's, his friend's name is Ryan Fingles, like Pringles, but Fingles. Now, these are all 15-year-old kids. and I have uh, 10 Fingles and 10 Togles. The day prior to that, so Friday, Nicholas is at school. He does his lacrosse training, stuff like that, a basketball game. And then all four of the friends, they converge at at uh, this their friend Ryan's house. They're just going to bullshit, you know, drink a little bit. They've been doing that lately. In fact, Nicholas has been getting in trouble with that. He's gotten in trouble at least twice from, for drinking. He's 15, right? You know, you shouldn't be drinking. But they were going to just chill, watch, you know, watch TV, play video games, stuff like that. There was a sleepover. They watched Robin Big and the movie accepted and around 1030 they kind of you know, dozed off or whatever. Around midnight Nicholas tells his friends that he's going to go to his house which is a 20 minute walk. He wasn't driving because he's 15 so you're, you can't drive at night or whatever it was. So he's going to walk home which is 20 minutes away from where he's at now spending the night. He's going to grab his car and come back and pick them all up. Now all four friends they're going to get in the car and just kind of ride around you know Joy maybe ride. Joy ride, maybe stop at McDonald's, stuff like that. Get a McClurry. I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so now what's your theory? Sounds like some uh-uh. teenage shenanigans to me. Yeah, it ain't looking good. Well, t- all right. So, all right. Let's the teenagers. Okay, all four of them. What do you think? They just went in there and killed his family. I Come mean, where, where would they have gotten the gun? Was it the dad's gun? The gun was later found. It was the dad's gun. Yeah. The the Browning family had a lot of firearms in the house. They had not a nine mil. They had a thirty eight special. They had a forty caliber. So they had, which is kind of a rare gun to have. But they had quite a few guns in the house, and all the kids were proficient in shooting as well. So it was the father's gun. The murder weapon was found on, uh, I think it was like Shore Road. We can look it up on the map. I think it was like a couple blocks away. It was in the bushes. Well, if I had to make a guess, are you asking for a guess now? Or yeah, not? yeah, go ahead. I mean, you, you mentioned how like the family was well liked and and were, they were wealthy and the, the, the kids were all you know very smart, top of their class. Um, So it could be one of Nick's friends was like jealous of what he had or maybe you know Nick they went they were all hanging out and Nick like pulled out the gun to like show off the gun and maybe they got into an argument and like there was so it's like an of, accident no I don't think that brutally murdering four people could be an accident but all right so uh, 
We know it wasn't because of how they were killed. All right. Think about this. Exactly. So it can't be just a spur of the moment thing. They were all killed in their sleep. But think about this. If it was just, all right, you know, I got a problem with Nick's dad. You kill the dad. Would you kill a 13 and an 11 year old just because? Like, I mean. No, that's why I'm saying it wasn't because of like any individual family member other than maybe Nick. Unless it was Nick because, you know, maybe he felt entitled to something and his family was like not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Police start tearing up the house. They notice that everything's already ransacked. They notice, for example, that the basement where the perp must have came in, he had stacked up an Xbox and put a Wii, a Nintendo Wii, on mm-hmm. top of that like he was going to carry it, but it was too too heavy. They also noticed that there was no there was no broken windows. There was no bashed in doors. There was no busted locks. There was nothing. There was no forced entry. So the first question they have is, okay, there's no forced entry. How did they get in? Well, the uh, 15-year-old must have had a key. Okay. Or they left the left a key under a mat or um, like the door was unlocked because they knew that he was out. When Nicholas goes to get his car, they're going to joyride. He leaves around 12 midnight, 1230, some, somewhere around there. 20 minute walk, get the car. Now he's going to be doing this like surreptitiously so his family doesn't see him taking the car because he's not supposed to be driving, but right. he's going to do it real quiet. So he's going to keep the lights off, you know, how you do when you're 15, you know what I'm saying? And then even though I remember my brother tried to do that and he backed into a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> he needed to call dad to help him out. No, it was just really loud. Everyone could hear it. <laughs> Anyway, he's going to back out and then come back over. So I don't know, an hour max? If that, yeah. He gets there to the car. He's going to sneak in the car, but oh shit, I don't have the keys. Mm. I don't have the car keys. Well, where's the car keys? Well, they're in the house. And in fact, earlier he called his brother, uh, Gregory, the 13 year old, and said, be sure to leave the basement door unlocked because he wants to go in there, grab the keys while mom and dad are sleeping, go back, get the car and you know, skedaddle. However, when he gets to the house at one o'clock in the morning, all of the lights are on in the house. So mom and dad, they are still awake. So I can't do this. I can't take this car. Okay. So he gets inside the car and he falls asleep. It would be 530 in the morning by the time Ryan calls his phone because everyone else passed out. He calls his phone at 530 asking him where he's at. And that's when he's like, oh shit, I fell asleep. I'm in the car. You guys spent the entire evening together yesterday? Yes. You actually leave the house at all last night? Um, we'll just walk around the neighborhood. Okay. How far do you live from where he lives? Um... Uh, half a mile. Half a mile. Did you guys go over there? No. Did he? Yes. What time did he go over there? Um, like 12.30. Last night? Yes. What did he go home for? Um, truthfully, we were going to just take his car out. I'm sorry, what was his name? Nick Brown. Just take his car out for a little drive. Okay. Did you guys do that? No. All of you were there? Um, and the, just, and he said he fell asleep. So he didn't get the car and and now there's been a lot of time that he has not been with his friends. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, five hours, right? Unaccounted for. Unaccounted for. Okay. And the, the murder happened. I feel real bad if it's not this case. <laughs> <laughs> The police, they're like, all right, so you fell asleep in your car because the lights were on and you didn't get the keys. Okay. They they question the other boys and Nick goes back over there. They go to the mall. Like I said, they're at the mall. One of the boys said that Nicholas had the keys in his jacket. He, he, he had them. He just, he didn't know they were there. He thought they were inside, but they're not. And he had them the whole time. What a mix up, right? So the detective is like, you know, something's really not adding up here. I'm in homicide. I've been here a while. Stuff's just not adding up for me right now with you, okay? Mm-hmm. Something's really not adding up here. And then later when the police keep flipping the house, finding everything, they're going to find out who killed this wealthy family, especially the two kids. They look for the gun safe key because the dad has guns. And when you have a 13 and an 11 year old, you know, common procedure is to lock them up. Absolutely. Where do you think they, they found that key? The key to the murder, the key to the gun safe. On the car keys. They actually found it under Nicholas's mask. Mattress. Hmm. You've done nothing but lie to your friends. I couldn't find the car keys. I couldn't get in the house. All the lights were on. You got the car keys in your jacket. You have no idea where the keys to the gun locker are, yet they're found under your mattress. Which is kind of weird, right? Like, why would yeah. it why would it be there? But they could have more than one key, I guess. All right. Should I just like tell you what the fuck happened? <laughs> Just just put us out of our misery, because otherwise I'm going to feel really bad if I'm 
suspicious of this 15 year old. All right. This is the first time they're accusing Nick. They say, all right, something's not adding up here. No, there was no break ins. The The gun was removed. It's no, no longer there. They look for the key. The key was under your bed. So someone came in, a robber. They stole nothing at all. They just flipped over things. There was jewelry, very expensive jewelry on the dresser, not touched. There was a, an envelope with money in it, hundreds of dollars sitting there, not touched. None of the electronics were touched. It looks staged. The detectives, both veteran detectives of over 20 years, they, they've they done this millions of times. They, they knew that he probably knew more than he was telling. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can't say that this boy killed his whole family and his brothers too. Who would do that? Who would do that? I mean, it just doesn't make sense, right? It, it doesn't make sense. And yet here terrible we things happen. Well, so here you go. This is them questioning him. Um, this really pay attention to his uh, demeanor, I guess, because they, they actually had a uh, problem with how he was uh, reacting. What time did you start calling the house? Oh, this the first call, I think we called just because the kids were to come over tonight and we were saying a little, little get together. And right. I called it about 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, this morning? This morning. At okay. Family's house phone. And I called their cell where I called all the numbers. Craig's cell, my mom's cell, dad's cell, work. He's pretty calm. Here's him uh, eating some Burger King. Makes up a little bit better, okay? Thank you. Do you have anything else? Do you have head or anything? His mom, his dad shot through the head and his two little brothers. And he's pretty calm right no there. No emotion at all. No emotion. But I mean, he could, to be, to, to, just to play devil's advocate, like he could be shocked. In shock. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Because like, you know, sometimes when you, when you see something horrific or hear something upsetting, you go numb. You don't know how to react. Yeah, that's true. But And then we've seen the cases where people overreact. You know what I mean? So, I know. Yeah. I mean, he's like really calm. <laughs> he just, I mean, not even 12 hours ago, he just saw, he, his whole family's gone, annihilated. He's really calm. Either he's in total shock or he's some s sort of sociopath, right? I mean, there's no other... I mean, he's like absent of a conscious. I mean, is it... But is that the case? So he's 15 years old. Is he heavily medicated or medicated uh, at all? That's a good question. He is not on any medications now. All right, look, he's got his feet on the chair. You see his feet on the chair? That's kind of fucked up. Kind of disrespectful. Yeah, his shoes are off, feet on the chair. It's kind of fucked up. Anyway, I mean, he, he just saw his whole family just... I would, wrecked um, and he's just like eating Burger King like most people wouldn't have an yeah, appetite I don't know if I would be able to eat no nope now nope. like like Jen said yeah we've been doing this a long time in some cases like people just react fucking weird oh interesting prefrontal cortex damage question mark Natasha oh shit it does kind of feel like that uh, yeah has he uh, in his sports play been hit in the head uh, lacrosse though yeah. yeah lacrosse is a very physical sport so Nicholas is caught right okay we know it's you can you put a gun to their head and you killed them there is no other explanation nobody broke into that house what happened did you just go in there and shoot up your whole family what the fuck i mean this is crazy like you were living the life like why would you do that well, it is crazy i mean what you know like they're they're providing a beautiful home i know that sometimes parents lay down the rules that you don't want to follow but like but really wh why would he though because this is him talking about all the stuff he has all the stuff he has that he would lose you had a reason to do it yeah, you did. What would my reason be? Your father was pissed at you last night. Maybe he didn't like your lifestyle. I don't know. How could I not like my lifestyle? I go to my summer summer house for two weekends. I get whatever I want. I get it. I mean... People do it every day. Why do people walk into schools and shoot all their friends? Mm. Good point. Because they're picked on. They don't, you know, they don't enjoy it. I enjoy my life a lot. Okay. It's, it's, uh, Again, I know people that love their children. They kill their children. People love their babies, but they kill their babies. Fair. All right, if he's pissed at his dad, why kill the mother? I told you earlier the mother was sleeping. I told you the two brothers were sleeping. The dad was sleeping too. Why kill everyone? Maybe he, right, so maybe it, he like planned it so that it would look like a murder suicide for his dad. I'm going to go through step by step the murder from what he says. This is the killer, a 15 year old killer. And this is what a 15 year old psychopath looks like. Literally no yeah. emotion at all besides like self-serving, trying to 
you know, barter his way. As you'll see when in the interview, he's like, well, if I confess, I'll still go to jail. He's almost kind of like saying, OK, I'll confess if, you know, you give me 10 years, whatever. I'll, I'll confess. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to barter his way if he's going to confess. He's not. I mean, his whole family is murdered, dead, gone. They're gone. The whole family. And he is just no emotion. Right. All right. Let me talk a little bit about a potential motive here. The father was really hard on Nicholas. He's the oldest one. He's the 15 year old, the oldest one. He's a Boy Scout going to get his Eagle Scout badge or merit or whatever. And the father, he has his very high expe expectation for the oldest son. Nicholas starts drinking. He's underage. He gets caught twice. The car gets taken away, stuff like that. The father, from what he would say, is not abusive physically, but emotionally abusive. It would come out that the, the, the mother, Tamara, allegedly has an alcohol problem. So like Nicholas can't drink, but he can see his mo mother drink every night type of thing. Now, no one no, no one can corroborate that because everyone's dead besides him. So we got to take what he says, you know. But I mean, is that a reason to do this? The dad is is kind of hard on him, you know. I think every every 15 year old thinks that their parents are kind of hard on them, though. Yeah. You know, like um, my parents were hard on me and I was a freaking straight A student, you know, like just it, it, it manifests itself in different ways. It doesn't mean you need to murder your parents and your, home, and your siblings. A former classmate said, and this is from the Washington Examiner, he often complained about his father and I specifically remember him saying he would kill his family one day in a joking manner. A, uh, another friend said, quote, he talked a lot about how rich his father was, how he wanted some of that money. And he also says, quote, he didn't like his father because he used to always yell at him and stuff. He used to always yell at stuff. The fuck? Like the other three kids, they had nothing to do with it. They didn't know this guy, this kid, their friend was going to go murder his whole family. He said he was going to get his car, not to murder his whole family. Like what the freak? It's kind of, this is what's really fucked up in my opinion. Yeah, the family's dead and that's really tragic. But what is also tragic is you staged this whole thing and included your three best friends, not only to be a part of it, but to see the dead bodies of every one of your family members yeah, that's that up. is so fucked up i can't even explain like that alone i think is almost as bad as the murders itself you you traumatized you, these three 15 year olds and if you really to watch the interview the one one of the boys trey when he talks about seeing the bodies i remember him saying that oh yeah and, and the mother was like that the you know the blood and stuff like the blood like kind of trying to downplay it in his own mind because he just saw something so horrific yeah it was the same it had the blood on it and stuff you know I mean, these boys are traumatized now. So you broke all of your friends in it to like be an alibi. And you also made them look at your dead family's bodies. That is so fucked up. I, I mean, holy shit. Yeah. Alex would say that Nicholas often, quote, and I guess he calls him Hitler, end quote. He also said that his brothers were, quote, annoying and his, quote, mom drinks a lot. That's what Alex would say. But here's the thing. Nicholas says to the detective, all right, I, you know, OK, if I confess, quote, even if there's a reason, I still go to jail. And if and if I tell you a reason that'll that'll somehow change my jail sentence. A lot of people would say he has antisocial personality disorder. From researching on here, a uh, it's the same as being a sociopath. So disregard for violation of others' rights, yeah. failure to conform to social norms and rules, which he was repeatedly doing. Remember, he was getting in trouble a lot mm -hmm. and he kept doing it. Also, go back to that video I just showed you. Was his legs not propped up on a chair in a police station? Who the fuck does that? Like, who does that? Like, if like I own the place. Right. Like, if that, yeah, that's, I, I'm trying to think about like my reaction would most likely be like I probably would be even if I wasn't crying I would pro like my reaction wouldn't be cro Natasha I think called this out um the body language like his arms were crossed over his chest defensive like I am very when I'm stressed like I touch my face like I go like this, I have to like pull my hair up. Um, I will like clench my hands, crack my knuckles. Like I will cover my stomach because I feel sick. Like I am physical when I am distressed. Most and people I are. show that. That's what they look for. Exactly. And so he is like, he's, and I wouldn't be able to eat. I know that mm -hmm. because anytime I've experienced a very traumatic loss, it's like don't eat deep for days. It's fine. Not important. Have no no appetite. In fact, the thought of food would make me want to throw. 
throw up. Yeah. No, I get, I get you. Well, why do you think they... So, so they're, they're probably like, this dude wants a Whopper? What? So, yeah, they asked him, you know, what do you want? Oh, double Whopper and a Coke. They knew that he did it. As and soon they, as you... Yeah, yeah. Probably right away. The, the because nothing, few, yeah. nothing was taken. You know, if he... The interview was a few hours, but they half the interview, they're, they're uh, building rapport and trying to get him to realize that he's not a suspect. Like, the, he, they're just trying to get information, but then they spring it on him like quick like okay you did it you know we know you did it yada 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 so then he gets really defensive and this is crazy this is what antisocial personality disorder looks like all right so and i told you from my research uh, a few things disregard for violation of others rights failure to conform to social norms impulsivity failure to plan ahead irritability and aggression reckless disregard for one's own safety and lack of remorse which that's what this case is now he has no conscience he actually I've never seen this before. Freaking tells the detective in a defiant tone. And you put a gun to their head and you killed them. How, how do you know? How do you know? He's looking for where he. Yeah, he's looking for like an avenue mistake, out. Yeah. How do you know? No one broke into the house. How do you know? And then they talk about the keys. And he says, uh, so the keys is going to put me away forever. The keys. Is that the thing? Yeah, I'm just, we're sitting here. You're not about. God. You don't have cameras. Him. You're not God. You don't have cameras in my house. But apparently you think you are that because is, you are controlling life and death of your own family. That is. Have you ever a 15 year old would say that Jeez. to a detective? Holy shit. Oh, I yeah. Have, well, this is, this is in 2008. <laughs> that that kind of behavior doesn't really surprise me working with teenagers. Like, I mean, this is Ugh. totally different than like vaping in the bathroom Jesus. type of interview. Like, why did you do it? How, whose is this? Blah, 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 blah. Special but, like, snowflakes. This is, yeah. Yeah. Kids are kind of defiant. You're not, <laughs> you're not God. You don't have cameras. I mean, no, I'm just, we're sitting here. You're not God. You don't have cameras. You know? But like, but kids are kind of, <laughs> kids are kind of like that. Like one of the most common things I've seen, like not most common. Common, but like it's it's happened more more than once or like an administrator will like tell a kid to like s like do something in the hallway or stop or whatever and be like get off my dick bro what yes they say like they like yeah it's the fucking music it's that shitty fucking rap music i like rap the old school stuff but that new shit is fucking terrible it's all about me some dr dre it's all about i don't know if i would say it's the rap music i would say it's the culture i i would say i say culture is different now rap is like i know music and arts are part of that but i don't know i don't know what the real answer I is mean, it's like yeah. it's social media it's tiktok it's all the things there's a sense of entitlement yeah but you gotta blame something i blame music you know my dad blames obama what do you yeah. blame? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean yeah you're right i guess the music follows the culture the culture's fucked i mean all these people just are so entitled and shit you know it is it's a sense of entitlement it's a sense of i can do what i want like what are you gonna do about it he says and not everyone's like that oh my god i mean what the fuck all right all right, so th there's v something very important here with the interrogation. Let me let me just say this right quick. So at this point, they know that a suspect committed these murders. They may be trying to confess. And if you watch these interrogation videos, you can see this. They're kind of like looking for like a push. And one of the big pushes for the detectives is a motive. They say, okay, we you're going to jail. You're going to be in the spotlight. People are going to know. How do you want to appear? Do you want to be, a, do you want to appear like a cold blood? Blooded killer. You're a stone cold killer that killed his family. An entitled little brat that killed all his family? Or is there some motive? Like your dad was hitting you or yelling at you and you snapped. So they're trying to like get him to 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 confess by giving them a reason almost of to do it. Not that he's just a cold-blooded killer, but these detectives sit here for almost two hours back and forth with this kid because he's antisocial personality and he has no remorse. So he's not buying into that bait. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's very frustrating to sit here. That's why he's like, you You don't know for sure. You know, I, I was what I was going to say, like the it's amazing how, you know, that the dad may have been trying to discipline his child for drinking underage, doing the thing and the reaction. Sure. Like, again, maybe this is the, I, I'm kind of saying this is a generational thing, but our reaction would not have been to murder somebody. I know. Right. I mean, and I just like that. That kind of makes me a little, um, um, like 
hesitant, like in the future, like if I ever get married and have kids, it's like, is my child going to kill me? Like, yeah, because he, he has three of them and they're they're all good kids. Nick is a good kid. Everyone loves him. He's a top student. He's popular. He yeah, he gets in trouble drinking. Holy shit. I don't even want to tell you the shit. I got in trouble for it in high school. You his, know what I'm saying? Um, like, OK, his worse than drinking. was most likely to get 20 to life. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez Christ. Oh, that should be a title. No, he's got long. he's got a little more than that. Oh, or, you know. interesting. And if and if I tell you a reason that'll that'll somehow change my jail sentence. Okay, so he just slaughtered his whole family, and he's thinking about how to get a lighter jail sentence. Like, like he just admitted n- to it right there. If I tell you I a know. reason, like that'll change my jail sentence, dude. If you if you watch this interview, just this one part out of context, you would think that he got caught shoplifting or something. You know. All right, if I tell you if I tell you what I stole, you know, will you take it easy on me? You just murdered four fa- your entire family, including your two little brothers, who for reasons unknown still didn't have to die they were sleeping they weren't witnesses to it we're gonna go th- i'll go through in a minute like step by step how it happened but i just wanted to show you this guy and i want to there sa- was no burglar i want to say from these detectives they said that usually in a mo- like 99 of the times a burglar will not murder unless yes. he's put like kind of pushed up against the wall in a situation usually they'll they'll flee they're not gonna they're not murderers they're burglars he spent those hours in talking some silly story to the jury to see right through. Our story. Well, maybe you didn't do that, but you didn't know what to do. I mean, you're claiming that you wake up and all the lights are on. But you know that something's wrong. Why didn't you go in? You knew the back door was open. I never saw the lights were on. The lights in my parents' bedroom. You said earlier that all of the lights were on. You fell asleep, you woke up, all of the lights were still on. I said my parents' bedroom was lights were on. You said all the lights. And that photo in front of him is of his family members. <laughs> <laughs> that's I was up. wondering. That's, that's yeah. That, so the detective actually put it in front of in, in his family members. Yeah. This this interview is kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. This is a crazy one. And so he's looking at his dead family right there. It's crazy. Also, it's kind of fucked up. I wonder if he slept in the house. Oh, I don't like that. He, they never oh. asked him that. That's they never asked him that. But they're assuming that now they're they're insinuating that right here. But if he would have, so he left, got to his house at one, killed his whole family by two or three. He ain't gonna stay up till 5 30 that's when ryan called i bet he went to sleep listen to this you've done nothing but lie to your friends i couldn't find the car keys i couldn't get in the house all the lights were on you got the car keys in your jacket you have no idea where the keys to the gun locker are yet they're found under your mattress you leave your friend's house you don't want to go get the car you don't come back until six o'clock in the morning it was 30 degrees outside last night you didn't sleep in your car I mean, he's he's laughing. Holy shit. He's like, he's almost whispering. We talked about this last time, but, you know, the mask is sanity. Where you talked about like American Psycho, where you, a psychopath. So a psychopath has have to wear this mask of sanity and you learn it from a young age. If you're at a family funeral and you're, I don't know, you're. You you're see gra- other people cry. Yeah, your grandpappy's dead there in the casket and everyone's bawling. And then you're like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Why don't I give a shit? Or you have it, to like fake it. Yes. So he's he's actually still that young. So he may not know yet, but he's like, so if I cry, will that make you believe me? You asked me where my parents' bedroom was. You haven't shed one tear for your family. Mm. You were totally unemotional about this. You walk into my house, your whole family's murdered, and you just, I didn't do it. Why would I do it? I was so, in my so friend's cry, house. So crying would make you, crying would make you believe that. I think you're trying to. That's actually going through his thought process. Maybe I should cry. Can I, is there some way I can cry? Can I, can I get, <laughs> can I make this happen right now? Is that not fucking nuts? Anyway, let me go through step by step what he says. I know this is running a little long. Is people still on here? Yeah, yeah. I'm very, like, I'm curious what, if he does finally break down yeah, and fast. Yeah, he does. And I, let's go through it right now. This is the murder as it happened. Ooh, interesting question. I will say from Wolfie, did they by chance have gunshot residue tested on him? Huh, that's a really good question. Yeah, question. Yeah. By all accounts, if he would have kept to his story, if he would have said nothing, give me an attorney, he would have gotten away with it. There was no gunshot residue. They, The gun was actually cleaned. Hmm. And it was discarded. It was found. But it was if the keys weren't under his mattress and and he had like 
a, if he was just there, like boom, 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 and then ran back home, perhaps he could have. And he just clammed up and didn't say anything because they didn't have any real evidence on it. You know, it's just a, did you do it? No, I didn't. You know, they can't prove uh, I it. Mean, there very was, there cir- was, it was circumstantial, right? Yeah, very circumstantial. That no, yeah. no one broke in. Nothing was t- taken. There was a gap with his friends that he was gone and unaccounted for, emotionless. Yeah, but imagine if he would have just been like, I didn't do it the whole time. Even like, you know, a jury would have a hard time making this case if there was really nothing, you know, just because the gun safe key is under his bed doesn't. I don't know. I th- I think there's still maybe I think he still could have been convicted even even so because yeah. I think is it beyond reasonable doubt even otherwise. And I think he I think yeah because you know it's not somebody else. It's not somebody else. Right. Nothing yeah. was taken. There's no motive. I know, but I mean, think about it. A 15 year old is going to murder his entire family, including his two younger brothers. Stranger things have happened. And then oh, wh- why don't you shed any tears? Well, my psychiatrist here, well, I got three of them working with me. They say that the trauma I went through of, of this whole situation made me completely numb. You know, I mean, you, I don't know. he's a 15 year old. And, and plus, like a 15 year old, is, like, what I'm are you going to gl- do? I'm glad he confessed because if he did it, then he deserves to be punished for it. So, yeah, all right. Look, all right. So here's what happened. They're at the house watching a movie, drinking beer, doing what 15 year olds do. They all fall asleep. Ryan gets up. He says, hey, I'm going to go get my car so we can go drive. Boom. He goes to his house. Now, before that, he calls his younger brother and says, hey, leave the base door open, which is the way he goes into the house. So getting the car was just a ruse. I don't know if he premeditated this whole thing for weeks or whatever, or even before this, but I think he was going to his house for this reason. I don't think he was going to get his get his car. You know, I think he was going to kill his, his family. Yeah. So he goes there and he gets his dad's nine millimeter. It wasn't even in the gun safe. It was on the workbench in the garage. It was there. It was used previously. So he left it there. Yeah having young kids you probably should keep it in a gun safe but all the kids were proficient with it and if your kids shoot anyway they know not to pick up a gun and act like it's a toy type of thing and then I went back to get the car and I saw him sitting on the couch the TV was on and then the gun was out on the Workshop bench. Mm-hmm. Nicholas goes into the garage, sees the gun there, puts on a pair of like Leatherman gloves, grabs the gun, and then goes to the couch where he could see his dad sleeping like through the window before he even went into the house. The dad was snoozing on the couch. Now the dad was shot in the back of the head. So this is really eerie. He goes up to the couch and he is sitting there and he is in his mind. He's a 15 year old kid. He This is the decision of his life. Should I go through with this? My dad been riding me hard. He's been yelling at me. He's been suspending me for all this, the drinking stuff. I'm getting, I'm getting it way more than my brothers, but should I kill him? So he is sitting behind his dad while his dad is sleeping on the couch for what he says, at least 30 minutes. What happened? I I sat there for a half hour. He was sleeping. Yeah. He was standing over his dad for a full half an hour. A full half an hour. I mean, really? I mean, it's interesting then. He, he thought really hard about it. Yeah. And then decided to do it. But put yourself in the mind of a 15-year-old. A half hour of watching your dad sleep, standing behind his head. What goes through your mind? So he goes between these phases of he lifts the gun up and he thinks about, you know, all the times his dad called him worthless and you're throwing your life away drinking and, you know, these friends you're hanging out with. Like, you know, look at me. I'm this successful lawyer. Who are you going to be? You don't even have any aspirations. You're never going to be as good as me. He's thinking all this shit in his head, putting the gun up to his dad's head. I went between putting the gun up to his head and pulling it back down. Thinking all this and then he puts it down. And he's like, well, think of my future. You know, you know, what will my future be like? What if I get caught? You know, as a 15 year old, he's going through this, put, puts it to his head, brings it down, up, down, up, down, up, down for 30 fucking minutes. Holy shit. I mean, that just blew my fucking mind right there. Yeah, that's a long time. Like, I just don't understand. I, I just I think that's all I can say is I just don't I don't get it. Like, how how could you think that this was a good idea? He like, says, quote, stood there for half an hour. And then I went between pulling the gun up to his head and pulling it back down. I was looking at him, raising the gun, putting it back down. And then I raised it one last time. That's when he shot. Fucking crazy, is it not? It's interesting how you mentioned the whole mask thing and the crying thing. Because now he's crying. I think he's even faking it now. It just doesn't right, seem he, real. Because he felt like that's what he's supposed to do. Yeah, that's called the mask of sanity. So a half an hour there. Jeez. And then once you do it, 
it. That's it. But why even? Okay, you killed your dad. What the fuck? Go leave. But your he, dad's he, the one that had problems with. Why go kill your mom and the two brothers? And he's saying it. Oh, it, it just it just went off. I'm not sure if I meant to pull the trigger. Or if it just went off. It just right. Yeah. And so Wolfie calls out. It just went off. Just went off four other times. He ran into my knife ten times. Right. What is he, Alec Baldwin? Behold. <laughs> I just I, 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 and, and the fact too that like he literally said to the officer earlier like why would I do it like I literally get everything I want like, like oh, you oh. can't you can't unmurder somebody oh you think that's fucked up look at what he says here right quick where's this gun that we found no it's for you guys to find Where's the gun going to be found? I don't know. That's for you guys. That's for you guys to find. That is fucked up. Like, I mean, he's like, def oh my God, this guy fucking makes my blood boil. Oh, I want to backhand him so bad. Anyway, so he, sh he finally pulls the trigger. Boom. This is also really fucked up. I mean, the whole case is fucked up, but it gets kind of worse. How? So. Oh, because he killed the rest of his family. That's right. Well, why'd you shoot him in the head? Quote, I just figured it'd be quicker. After that shot, after he shot his dad in the back of the head, quote, I realized I couldn't walk away from that. The the mom wakes up upstairs in the master bedroom. He can hear the mother going and seeing what that was. It was a huge freaking bang, but she was sleeping. So maybe, you know, she just had a nightmare or whatever, woke her up. The whole house is silent. She never comes downstairs, but he, for the next 30 minutes, will sit on the couch next to his dead father mm. and wait for his mom to go back to sleep for 30 fucking minutes. Wow. <laughs> because it's better for him to kill his mother than for his mother to find out that he killed his father and not forgive him for that. Right. Quote, I waited for a little bit before I shot her. End quote. Like, it, if if it was really all about the dad, it could have stopped right there. He sat on the couch for 30 minutes by his dead father, just sitting there silent because he doesn't want to make a noise because the mom's already like, what's, you know, what was that? Is, is everyone okay? Like, I thought I heard something, maybe a dream. Checks in on the kids. Like, she goes to the kids. You guys okay? Oh, yeah, we're fine. Okay. Okay, okay, everyone's good. But Dad, like, didn't come downstairs to look for her husband. I mean, like, freaking, wouldn't you know that your husband is not in bed next to you? Like, I, I mean, maybe they had separate rooms. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, kind of. I don't know. Maybe they were arguing or something. Yeah. But okay, you know, maybe maybe my husband dropped something or you know whatever. He's up. Fucking, I would still. No, I, it is a big I house am by too. By no means placing any blame on her. But no, I, I know not. me, and I would have. But it is. If a, I had heard a know. sound and I knew you weren't there, I would probably check it out. So he sits there quietly not even moving a fucking muscle not even moving a muscle just okay i gotta wait till my mom goes back to sleep i mean just that dude it just blows my mind this is a 15 year old kid just like silent waiting for his mom to go back to sleep so he can go shoot her i wonder if he had <laughs> like fucking because when you're younger and i don't remember the exact age but i don't know if at 15 if you have never experienced a death before if you really understand the finality of death oh my Oh my God. This this kid is really smart. He's an Eagle Scout. Yeah, I know. But like still, you know, your brain isn't at, fully developed until you're 25. I but do think still, at 15, you understand the finality of death. I, I would hope so. But I'm, you know, trying to look for the, you know, the good in everyone, yeah. I guess. But like, but what did he expect to like to shoot his dad while he was asleep and then have him wake up the next morning and pour him a bowl of Cheerios? Like, I I, will he, I don't think he thought about the consequence, the consequences, but I think he knew the finality because he thought about it for 30 fucking minutes before he did. It. But Extent he could have also shot him, like, and maybe not killed him, like, and injured him. Even if yeah, he shot but him he the shot head. him in the back of the head. Yeah, you I ain't know. coming back. He from knew that. he was dead. No, I know. But Especially he if he's experienced with guns. Yeah, he knows how to handle them. He knew. He knew what he was doing. Hundred percent. Okay, but here's the thing: why kill the mom and why kill the other two kids or the other brothers? That doesn't make any sense. No, to me either. Well, even I, more so. Well, for me, I mean, the mother. Like, okay, let, let me just throw this out there right quick. The dead. The father does have a pretty sizable inheritance. Yeah, which you ain't getting, kid. Yeah, but you would have to split it with two brothers. Well, also... He can't get shit in jail, dude. No, but also... He didn't think he was going to jail. Well, that's because he's a 15-year-old moron. Well, also, like, if you kill the dad, and then it's, like, you know, really upsetting for the family and, you know, the mom, and you have the two kids. But then he kills the dad, then he kills the mom, right? Okay, now, if he leaves it at that, then he has two younger siblings to take care of. Like, do they have any other family out there? Like, would well, he be responsible for those two brothers? I mean, obviously, the number one, the inheritance, that makes sense. He would have to split it with them, but... He's 
not of age. He wouldn't. Ha- he, they would be in foster t- care or family care. Uh, per- most likely in a will, like they would have um, it, someone who would be taking care of their children. He had quite a few family members, ex- you know, extended family, aunt, uncle, this, that, and the other, who wrote the judge and basically said to be lenient on him because the de- the father was hard on him. But then again, they were like, I mean, he's a he's the only fa- he's the only family left. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. There's no reason for me. Why would I? Why would I jeopardize? You know, you put money into it. I have a very large, or had have whatever inheritance coming to me, mm-hmm. regardless if there's insurance money. There you go. There. He's known for since he didn't provide a reason for doing this. The reasoning that everyone knows him for is he was trying to get the inheritance. The real reason is who the fuck knows? He never provided one. You know, the detective wanted him to, but he never did. So this detective's like, you're a <laughs> fucking monster. Yeah, dude. The detective says, I'm looking at a cold blooded killer. You're a stone cold killer. Cold blooded killer. He is, dude. This guy has no fucking emotions. Holy shit. There you go. Okay. You know what? So, all he, right. he so knows regardless his- of money, you, you know, you don't mention your family at all. Don't have anything to lose. I don't know your family. Like, so he knows his father has sizable real estate out there. Like he knows if he could get away with it, he could get all the money. So is that the reason he killed his bro- two brothers? No, literally no one knows, but him, he has never said anything else. Like, did he do it for the money? Did he do it to eliminate witnesses? Probably not. I mean, why? They're, they're not witnesses. They're sleeping. Like what the fuck? How old were the other <laughs> brothers? 10 and uh, 13, 13. And, and 11. I mean, Jesus fuck. This is a terrible fucking case, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like they'll never they'll never get to go to high school or go to prom or graduate or get married or yeah, it, awful. Yeah. yeah. So uh finishing up the, the murder anyway. So he spends that half hour with his dad. He goes up and he shoots his mother twice and then quote, I went in and shot Greg and then turned to Ben. So just one after the other. Ben was probably awake. If I was put money on it he would be the only one awake because they he was in the same room if you fire a gun in that room yeah. but uh, you know it was quick so I mean he didn't hesitate after that no I mean and he already uh, killed two people before so why why change now wow Jesus I mean him fucking eating Burger King like oh you know do you want something to eat can we get something to eat yeah just a double whopper uh coke fries yeah thanks man <laughs> what the fuck dude this is crazy I mean I'm angry I have trouble showing empathy and emotion too but fuck dude I am not that bad that is fucking that is that is pushing it (laughs) so what was the sentence what do you think he should get he was only 15 which is the hard part to this case well they did try him as an adult keep in mind if you're under 18 you can't um, can't be executed well if he was tried as an adult did he get four five or four life sentences he was tried four counts of murder two life sentences so two and they were consecutive which means they're served on top of each other I'll never get out. No, no, no. On top of each other. Like at so the same he, time? Yeah, at the same time. So he could parole in, I think it was 33 years. Let me see. Um, How does... Hey, wait, no. D- tell, tell me why he won't ever be out of prison. There's one reason why he won't be out. Even though he can parole, there's like one very specific reason. Here he is right now on uh, writeaprisoner.com. Is it? Is it because... This is him in prison. He's smiling. Writeaprisoner.com. Man, we should... I didn't realize that was a thing. Yeah, man. I had... Didn't know that was a is thing. Is that like either. a dating site? I know that people try to like date in people New- in prison, but like, it's that. Uh, please don't sign me up for that. Like, I don't like that's one site I don't want to be part of. Oh my god. <laughs> Does anybody use this? Kind of crazy. Huh. I didn't know it was a thing either. Nuts. I had no idea. Well, why do you think that? So why won't he ever be released? Okay. This is the reason he won't be re- be released. And it's obviously not, you know, this is my opinion, but it's shared pretty heavily. The reason he can't be released is because he's a, a psychopath, right? He's a danger to society. He's, he will, he's born with this disorder of not having empathy or a conscious. Has he if been they, diagnosed since he's been in prison? If they, release him and he still has this disorder he is really likely to reoffend. so that he doesn't is, mean he won't be out of prison though jen's question I, is i totally know but valid. he's got to go in front he's got a life sentence he's got two the only way he can get out because he has life but with parole is in 30 years he goes to the parole board at 50 or whatever and then they say okay it says here that you have anti-personality disorder you don't have emotions you don't have a consciousness you know if we let you out 
about you don't care if someone lives or die. You could do this again. That's but the this, fucking thing. So, but this is this is the flaw in which he could he could act like a little church mouse for his thirty years in Good prison behavior. and be an, a star prisoner. But they know that he's got the disorder. They, they you s- have seen more horrific people be released, no, I, though. Yeah, that's true. I looked it up. It's uh, one one uh, psychiatrist said it's like a death sentence to get labeled a sociopath or psychopath, like diagnosed with it, because you will never get out of prison. Well, hopefully that is the case. I mean, this is the because kid, this I kid, don't think that the people should be released. Really this kid them. right here just murdered his entire fucking family. This kid right here. I mean, can you fucking imagine? Holy shit! You know, like everyone just dead. Boom, boom, boom. I will boom, say his dead. smile is different from the rest. I was of gonna the just smiles. say that, like literally, there's joy on everyone's faces except for his. I didn't catch it the first time you flashed it, but the second time yeah. you flashed that photo. Well, the, yeah. also the the Smile yearbook photo not. he was you just showed too. It's just like, and he also is yeah. he also is spaced out from his. His rest eyes of his are like you see, dark, he's, he's kind soulless of eyes. Like these? No. At, for, you could have just assumed maybe he wasn't a good like photo taker, you know. But no, no man. No. I've, I've seen gonna... a I've seen a lot of psychopaths in my time in the military, and they pretty much all look like this. <laughs> no, I'm just good to know. I'll keep that in mind when I'm going through dating profiles. Yeah, don't date military people. If you if you want, I mean, we're yeah. pretty much all psychos. You have to be. You gotta go kill people. Like <laughs> I'm just kidding. Unless you enlist when it's not wartime. Yeah, but who does? Does that. You still want to blow you, shit up. You don't get a fucking bonus during that shit and you don't get to blow shit up. Yeah. Anyway. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.